Mr. Sin, you're probably the best private eye in the business. Well, I try to make a living as an insurance investigator, if that's what you mean. Well, uh, what I have in mind does not exactly come under the heading of insurance investigation. Oh, then if you'd like me to recommend somebody to you... But then again, it might. What? Does the name of Sarah Balderson Barling mean anything to you? Uh, yeah, wait a minute. The old dowager who owns about half of the Southern Connecticut Water and Power Company? That's right. She's a very important client of ours. I thought you said this matter doesn't involve insurance. It doesn't. Yes. I hope you can keep it from doing so. Oh, now look, if this is one of those bodyguard assignments... No, it isn't. And incidentally, in addition to your expense account, there will be a sizable fee for your services. Oh, well, why didn't you say so in the first place? How much? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand? But if you think perhaps I'd better get some... Don't even think of it, Mr. Wakeley. I'll be right over. Bob Bailey, in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Eastern Liability and Trust Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the only one but matter. With a $5,000 extra fee dangling in front of my face, expense account item one, naturally, was $1.10 for a cab to Fred Wakeley's office in the Gregson building downtown on the square. I'm glad you decided to take this on, though, after I mentioned the fee to you. Yeah. Sit down, please. Yeah, thanks. Any of the money, huh? Well, well, I suppose I can't exactly blame you. Mr. Wakeley, if I ever reach the point where I can turn up my nose at 5000 I bucks. mentioned Mrs. Sarah Balderston Barley. Yeah. And as I understand it, she's one of the wealthiest people we well, have. it's really her daughter that we're concerned about, that she is concerned about. Oh, I don't Name know. Name is she... Truda Lynn Barley. Truda. She celebrated her 21st birthday about a month ago. Oh, yeah, I remember. That big brawl the old lady threw for her must have made the headlines all over that the eastern... That brawl, as you call it, was engineered by Truda Lynn herself. Yeah, and as I recall now, the police had to put on a couple of dozen extra men to keep things under control. Champagne flowed like The water. cost of that party, including damage to the hotel where it took place, must have run to thirty or forty thousand dollars. Then this Truda Lynn must be quite a gal. I'd like it to was typical it. of many such incidents in the life of Truda Lynn Barling. Young, wealthy, completely spoiled, and completely rebellious against her mother's recent attempt at discipline. Well, to put it mildly, she's been quite a problem. Life at home with her mother has been one continuous battle. There's been about as much love between them these past few months. And believe me, Dollar, it's been as much her mother's fault as it has been through the lady. You mean for spoiling her so badly in the first yes. place? Yes. You see, her mother's only interest in life has been in adding to the fortune her husband left her. Well, what has happened, Fred? Five days ago, Truda Lynn simply packed up and left for parts unknown. Oh? And I'm certain it was more than mere coincidence that young Harvey Howard also... Who's uh, Harvey Howard? Harvey is a worthless young playboy who's been trying for some time to marry her, and very obviously only to get his hands on her money. Also... Yeah? Also, Lucy Taylor left town about that same time. Who is she? One of Truda Lynn's playmates. A young social climber who's been practically living off her for the past two years. Uh-huh. Over Mrs. Barling's strenuous objections, of course. So the three of them have just cut loose to run off and have a fling, huh? Any idea where they might have well, you've got to find the girl. Somehow bring her back here. Yeah, well, now, Mr. Wakeley, if she's 21. Otherwise, my company stands a good chance of losing the literally millions of dollars worth of insurance policies of her yeah, mother. Yeah, but look, even for a $5,000 fee... We'll make it ten. Hmm. And must I remind you that it's hardly your place to question the reasons for an assignment given you by one of the companies you've agreed to serve? Uh, Ten thousand, huh? Yes. Okay, I'll see what I can do. No trouble at all, I found the taxi driver who'd taken the missing girl down to the railroad station the morning she'd left home. Item two on the expense account, a $5 tip to him for the information that she'd been met there by young Lucy Taylor and Harvey Howard. Loaded with luggage, they'd all climbed aboard a train for New York. Item three, 45 cents for a phone call to my old pal, Lieutenant Randy Singer at the 18th Precinct, New York Police Department. What do you mean, 
do I know who Trude Lynn Farling is. Well, do you, Randy? Listen, she and a couple of her little buddies blew into town less than a week ago. And they've been raising so much cane around the nightclub circuit. Well, well for a while there, we were thinking of putting on a flock of extra men. Well, do you know where she's staying? Yeah, Johnny. An expensive little apartment house over at 727 East 51st Street. Thanks, you Randy. Want... When I get down there, I'll buy you a drink. Item four, 875 for a quick lunch, then a train down to New York. Item five, a buck and a half for a cab to 727 East 51st. A real fancy place, and the doorman wore enough gold braid to sink a battleship. I showed him my credentials, and he had the elevator boy take me up to the single apartment on the whole seventh floor. Straight ahead, sir. Okay, thanks. I uh, see the door is open like it usually is, but uh, maybe you better ring, sir. Yes, sure. Miss Burling. Hello. Anybody? Eight three three, Hank. Sergeant Warren. Give me Lieutenant Randy Singer. In homicide. I told Randy what I found. Yeah, it was the body of Trittle and Barley, lying there in the middle of the floor. She may have been very pretty once, but the blows from a heavy bronze candlestick had changed all that. A half-finished cigarette with a touch of lipstick on it was still smoking in an ashtray, so it must have happened within the past few minutes. Quickly, I searched the apartment. I found nothing. Then, purely on a hunch, Hoping he hadn't yet left headquarters, I made another call to Randy Singer. I was just about to grab Doc Winters and hop into a prowl car. Now, be sure you don't touch anything, Yeah, sure, John. sure. Now, listen, Randy. Yeah? Trudel Lynn came down here from Hartford with a couple of playmates. Yeah, Harvey Howard and a washed-out blonde named Lucy Taylor. You know where they're staying? Yeah. Then if I were you, I'd pick them up and bring them along with you. You think one of them did it? Just, just a hunch. Uh-oh. One of your famous hunches, huh? Just bring them along, will you? Oh. a careful look around the apartment of the murdered girl, I questioned the elevator operator and doorman. That is, after they calmed down a bit. Well, I still think I better notify the management, Mr. Dollar. And if the cops is coming Save here... Save it till later. Is there any way to get up to that apartment besides the elevator? Only the service entrance at the back of it. But the only way anybody could get in there is if I let them in the service entrance downstairs here. Ain't that right, Willie? That's right. Did anybody come here to see Miss Barling today? Yes, sir. Two people. Yes, sir. Who? Well, you see, about two hours ago, Miss Barlin went over to see a doctor in that building across the street. Ain't that right, Willie? That's right. Uh, Dr. Thorson. Been seeing him a couple of times every day. I see. Ain't that right, Willie? That's right. Then she come back here not more than a half hour ago. Said she was going to pack up her stuff and leave. Yeah, ain't that... Yeah, go on. Well, then her friend Miss Taylor come around to see her. When? Only a little while before you come. Ain't that right, Willie? Yeah, that's right. Not more than maybe 10 or 15 minutes before you come. How long did she stay? Oh, maybe five, six minutes. Yeah, maybe less. Maybe less. Yeah, it seemed to me. I no sooner come down and got settled, and I had to go up there when she rung the buzzer. You again. said that two people were up here to see Miss Parling. Who was the other? It was a man. Yeah, Him and Miss Taylor both been here a lot of times. You know his name? For sure. Nobody ever gets in this building without giving their name unless we know him. Ain't that right, Willie? That's right. Well, who was he? Uh, name is Mr. Harvey Howard. When was this? Right after Miss Taylor left. And they didn't come together? No, sir. By the time her cab got down the street, they has come rolling up. How long did he stay? Well, not any longer than the lady had. Ain't that That's the... right. Then listen. I'm going across the street to see this Dr. Thorson. If I'm not back by the time the police get here, tell him where to reach me. Send for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, 
Mr. Dallas from the first day that she moved into the apartment across the street. Sometimes a couple of times a day. Well, what was the matter with her, Doctor? Well, physically, she had what might best be described as a mild incipient peptic ulcer. I see. And with all her nightclub drinking and smoking... Well, strangely but... enough, despite Miss Barling's party-going proclivities, uh, habits, uh, she was quite the hypochondriac. Oh, of course, all her tearing around late hours during the first three days and nights here in the city did her no good. Only the first few days? Yes. Hypochondriac, you said. Yes. And as is often the case, Mr. Dollar, to someone like that, the doctor suddenly finds himself a close confidant, even on rather short acquaintance. Go on, doctor. Well, in spite of telling me it was only to say goodbye and thanks, I think her visit today was more than anything else to boost her morale her self-confidence. Why? She'd suffered a considerable change of heart since running away from her mother. Well, that's all. Apparently, this was the first chance she'd ever had to really be by herself, think things out for herself. And she was getting ready to telephone and renounce the two... Uh, uh, leeches, the best word I can think of. The two who came down here with her? Yes, she was going to telephone them, tell them that she was through with them. And then go back to Hartford, square things with her mother, and then possibly get a job... Do something to make up for all the time she'd wasted just playing around. Maybe you don't know it, Doctor, but what you just told me indicates that if she did suddenly throw them over, either Harvey Howard or Lucy Taylor, either one of them may have killed her. Mr. Dollar, I believe you're right. But which one? And how to prove it? Oh, great. I thought you were going to send over for me when the police got here. Well, I was, Mr. Dollar. Ain't that right, Willie? That's right. But this lieutenant said not to bother. That's right, Johnny. How are you, boy? Did you get hold of the Taylor girl and Harvey Howard? Yeah, they're inside, locked up in a couple of bedrooms. Okay, okay. You two can go on back downstairs now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, have you found out anything? Well, as for your hunch that this Taylor brought or this fishy-eyed Howard did it, well, it's probably a pretty good one, Johnny, but I'd like to see some proof. Yeah, I thought you were bringing over a medical. Well, the doc and one of the boys from the lab just left. Meat wagon will be along in a little while to take this to the morgue. Did they find anything? Any prints? Well, whoever did it must have worn gloves. Where'd you find these two kids? Well, it's Miss Taylor. Hey, she's uh, quite a dish, Johnny. Oh. Yeah, the kind you'd expect to pick up at the back door of a cheap stripper joint. Why a girl with money like Trudel Lynn Barling would ever let somebody like that get their hooks... Where did you find her? In her hotel room with the lights packing up and getting ready to leave. To go back to Hartford, she said. And Harvey Howard? In his room there at the lights, also packing to leave. They're the only ones known to have been up here today. Yeah, yeah, I checked it out real good with that dumb doorman and the elevator boy. And I'm sure that nobody could have gotten up here without their knowing about it. And we've got to show up to one of these two that murdered Trudel Lynn. Prove they both did it. When they came up here separately? Oh? I didn't know that. Now, let's talk to him. Yeah. Uh, just unlock that door beside you. Right. Oh, no police? All right, well, I'd like to Come see on. you prove I killed Maybe I will, Harvey. You think you are getting me cooped up like this? Why don't you do something with the body of poor Trudel Lynn lying there? Your, uh, dearest friend, huh? Yes, of course you... Who are you? This is Johnny Dollar, you two. He's a special investigator. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, go ahead and investigate, Mr. Dollar. Just keep me out of it. All right, Harvey. Aren't you going to serve cocktails? It's cocktail time, you I know. I said all right. Lucy, you came up here to see Miss Barling a little while ago. That's right. Why? I've been seeing her every day since we all came down here to New York. Anything wrong with that? You were pretty mad at her for bringing you down here and then suddenly telling you she was going to leave and go back to Hartford, weren't you? What? Or do you want to pretend she didn't call you and tell you that? All right. Maybe she did. But I thought that if I could see her and talk to her, I could sort of straighten things out, you know. Only when I got here, she wouldn't let me in. She didn't let you in? Just slammed the door in my face, so I left. Did she, Lucy? Then why is it I found the door ajar when I got here? So maybe she opened it again after I... You were working here? Of course. She telephoned to me, told me the same thing. The door was ajar. Yes. So you came on in? No. No, of course not. It wouldn't have been possible. Oh, no. I rang the bell and knocked, but I got no answer. And I decided she'd already left, so I went back to my hotel and... And... Why lie about it? Yeah. Why, honey? Well, honey, I did come in. I found her body lying here. I knew I'd be suspected of killing her. The only thing I could think of was getting away. That's a lie. You came in here and killed her. No. You found her sitting here in the chair and you sneaked up. No. You know something? I think she's right. 
got a pair of gloves on you, Harvey? Why, yes. I always carry gloves. Even in the summer? Of course. So you put them on to avoid leaving fingerprints. Miss Barling was sitting here in the chair, her back to the door, quietly smoking a cigarette. Yeah, I found the ashes, and the ashtray was still warm. No, oh, please, listen. Wait a minute. Huh, Johnny? Brother, how stupid can I get? Well, what do you mean by that? Lucy, you swear you didn't come in here. Yeah, I'd be struck down if I did. Maybe you will. I told you. Tudor Lynn slammed the door in my face when I came here to talk to her. She wouldn't let me in. Okay. Randy, that cigarette. Uh, yeah, what about it? It was still burning when I got here. It had lipstick on it. And you didn't save it, Johnny? No, but it turns out I didn't need to. Don't you see? What the lieutenant said was true. She was sitting right here with her back to the door. She that said... lipstick was yours, Lucy. The cigarette was yours. I tell you, I swear I didn't come in here. Uh, not Miss Barling, Johnny? Suffering from an ulcer, seeing a doctor a couple of times a day about it. Smoking? No, you're right. She didn't smoke. Yeah. Want to let the lieutenant have your gloves, Lucy? No. Why? And, Randy, you want to bet the lab will find microscopic traces of bronze on them from that candlestick she used to kill Trudel Lynn? All right, Miss Taylor. Hand them over. Yeah, you're the extent. But you know something? If that pretty boy Harvey had found her alive when he'd arrived, I'm not so sure he wouldn't have done her in. There are times when I'm glad I'm not rich with a bunch of these leeches hanging around grabbing it by dough. Which reminds me, that nice extra fee you promised me in this case. Expense account total, including transportation back to Hartford, twenty-five fifty-five. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a frantic fisherman who proves to be the key to a murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey. Originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Les Tremaine, Herb Vigran, Alan Reed, Frank Gersel, Jack Edwards, and Jack Grimes. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Jim Matthews speaking.